Cheers! Welcome, Welcome to, to Movie, Movie Bitches. Bitches! Episode 66. Tonight we're reviewing Steve Jobs. Yeah. <laughs> so... I went into this excited. I did too. Um, obviously we love Michael Fassbender, so that was like on board. Uh, I love Danny Boyle. I really respect and mostly like Aaron Sorkin. Uh -huh. um, so I was very intrigued by that combination. Well, and I'm like a big Apple fanboy, so... Well, sure. Like, I was just excited that like, I like Steve Jobs as, like, yeah. you know, like, so the, the subject matter was of interest. Yes. So I was excited. And yet, it's one of the most uncomfortable films I've ever sat through in the past, like... It felt like, um, I mean, a lot of Aaron Sorkin movies feel like you're being lectured. Mm. But this felt like I was being yelled at. I had so many problems with this movie. Basically, so, to explain oh, the yeah. okay, plot, so I guess, this movie is about Steve Jobs, shocker. But... It, it's it not. takes such a weird, like... Okay, this, wow. This movie is three 30 to 40 minute segments. It's like a stage play. It feels like Birdman. I was, I was going to say, right? I felt like it was Birdman and um, the one where the he yells at him all the time. Whiplash? Yes, Whiplash. <laughs> Some combination. Because it's just like, it's like Birdman and Whiplash, where it's just like, I'm going to yell at you backstage while for 40 we, minutes. While we walk and talk through a hall. I mean, it's Aaron Sorkin, so it's weird. I feel like <laughs> that must be in the scripts, because all of his movies and TV shows all have the walk and talk, and you'd think some directors would be like, you know... Not this time. 99% of the scenes in this movie occur in a uh -huh. dressing room, yep. a hallway, or in an auditorium. Yep. I mean, if you had put in a, like a, a, just like a continuous drum roll, this would have been like Birdman Tech.0. Because like he's crazy. Well, the same thing kept happening. So, the like, same. It would be yeah. the day of the launch of a big product. Yep. And Kate Winslet, his daughter, his ex girlfriend, Jeff Daniels, and Seth Rogen as Steve Wozniak, each independently would show up, yell at him for being an asshole. Yep. Then leave. Then they would montage forward numerous years over things that were interesting and then the same thing would happen in a different auditorium hallway or dressing room this entire movie is the scene in spinal tap where they get lost going to the stage and they just keep being like rock and roll and they can't find the stage and they keep turning around corners and they're just going up hallways and down hallways and they can't figure it out <laughs> that's this movie literally seth rogan who played steve wozniak would show up every 40 minutes and say Steve, you have to thank the Apple II team. Just acknowledge the top guys. And Steve Jobs would be like, no. No, that's not what this is about. And then he'd be like, but you have to. Come on, man. Just acknowledge the top guys. And then he'd say no, and then 40 minutes would go by, and he'd show up again in his little windbreaker. Just acknowledge the top guys. I'm starting to think that like, that, that like the Hulk, mm -hmm. it might be impossible to make a good Steve Jobs movie. Oh, certainly. I feel like that's... That's the case. I think it is. This movie starts and it seems like it's the end of the movie. Yeah. I feel like it was like like three episodes of the newsroom put together. Yep. Because you're dropped into the middle of a movie. Really the middle the middle of like a ten hour mini series. But you only get to see three chapters of it. Yeah. And then it ends. Yeah. This isn't a movie, too. This is a play. It like really is, right? Play. It really, it's like a conceptual stage play. Like of, an art piece. And it's, it's like an art piece stage play. I just don't understand. Because like I did, I read through the 500 page book or whatever it right. was. Right, I mean, you And I really that. enjoyed it. Right. And, and it's really fascinating. It goes all the way through his life. Like, what a fuck you to a 500 page book that is from beginning to end to be like, 
we're gonna show three moments in his life that are all the same. Here's the thing, I feel like it was written with the assumption that everyone has read the book, but what's infuriating is that even after having read the book, right. it's almost more angering because then you're like, but this isn't anything to do with that. This is gonna be a bold statement. I feel like I learned more about Steve Jobs from Ashton Kutcher. Legitimately. Did you watch that movie? I did. It's terrible. Yeah. In all, it is not good, but it is more linear and more, like I feel like I learned it's more. It's more of a biopic. It's more this of a wasn't biopic. a biopic. This movie is not a biopic. But it isn't a biopic. It is not a biopic. But then it also wasn't really a character study. No. Not really. Well, and here's, okay, here's what's really the most annoying for me. Huh. Because the whole movie is like, oh, well, Steve Jobs was an asshole. Steve Jobs was an asshole. He was an asshole, but like he got things done, so it's okay. But he's an asshole. But really, the movie was all of the other people yelling at him and telling him that he was an asshole. Well, like, and it presented And very him, little of us seeing him be an asshole. It presented him... Did he have Asperger's or some type of social issue? He had social, like... They presented it like he can't help it. Like, he can't help but be an asshole. Right? A little bit. That's how they presented yeah. it. So when everyone was just, like, berating him constantly, I was like... You guys, it's doing his best. It seems like he's trying. I don't know. Like you're you're yelling at him right eight minutes before he has to go on stage and do this big presentation. Like maybe pick a different time to yell at him. Well, and so here's the thing. Like they keep bringing up like big. So he's he's literally about to walk on stage, and Jeff Daniels just goes, "So, how did you feel about being adopted? Feel like you were abandoned?" We got 45 seconds. I want to use it to ask you a question. Why do people who were adopted feel like they were rejected instead of selected? Just having people around the person tell me that they're crazy or Is that they're not... an asshole, yeah. does it make me on your side? No, exactly. Also, this movie is like Steve Jobs does Kramer versus Kramer. It, they, they make it into, is this illegitimate daughter of his his or not? He's an asshole to her. You know, the wife is needy. Like... That's 70% of the movie? I wouldn't have even been as angry about it focusing on him and his daughter. Right. If it focused on him and his daughter. Yeah. But it focused on him and his daughter through the lens of him preparing for these yeah. presentations. Well, and it so it's like, just that we never was... saw any of his life. We never saw anything. We just saw 40 minutes of bickering before he went on stage. And it's like, With People constantly that. being like, Steve, eight minutes. Yeah. Steve, six minutes. Steve, you gotta get to the stage. And I'm like, Steve, we're on right now. I'm like, we can't be for fucking Steve. 45 minutes. How is this only eight minutes? <laughs> wait, wait. Oh my god. We have not talked about the mystery scene where completely unexplained Steve Jobs washes his feet in a toilet. <laughs> right? Is that was what that like a real thing that happened? I don't know. If it is, why not address it? That's right. such a weird thing. Right? Like, the movie presented it as, like, he's washing his hands in the sink. The wife who he's talking to doesn't bat an eye. She's not even like, uh, huh? What's that about? Nothing. So even if that was completely factual, why not address it? Why not explain it in any way? I don't know. So weird. I guess he's not a germaphobe. Like, what the fuck was that? I don't know. <laughs> so I was really intrigued because I love Danny Boyle. I really genuinely love most of his movies. They're so frenetic and colorful and exciting. And I was like, okay, how is this marriage of him and Aaron Sorkin going to work? It didn't. It didn't work at all. It really felt like Danny Boyle was like, hey, guys. There would be like moments of really weird visual things. And you'd be like, oh, I'm intrigued. But this is out of place. And it was yeah. like, hey. I'm they still like, here. They're like in a hallway and then they just like start projecting, start talking about Skylab and they start like projecting like, an, uh, like a, a the, rocket launch. The rest launch. of the movie is just like a straight like two actors in a stage play, like boring. <clears throat> we're like, we're like a Fincher and an Aaron Sorkin blend mm. really well because Fincher has long luscious takes of, you know, actors just talking and like that's his style where Danny Boyle is not that. It's all about the editing and cutting yeah. up and moving things around. Yeah. <sighs> It didn't, it was a bad combination. It was, and it's well, so Well, and so David Fincher was supposed to direct this. Right, and he then got fired. Board, or left. Or something, or something I went down. 
It was supposed to be Christian Bale playing Steve Jobs. Right. Who I think would have been good. Would have been, yeah. I mean, um, and then it was supposed to be Leonardo DiCaprio. Whoa. That would have been a mess. Whoa. Don't you think that would have been a mess? Such a mess. Oh my god. It would have been very hammy. Yeah. I mean, I thought Michael Fassbender was good. Well, no one in it is bad. I just felt like I was behind all the time and that I was being yelled at. So eventually I just like shut down and was like, I don't want to be here anymore. I just, I really didn't want to be there anymore. I... I haven't wanted to, like, leave the theater in a while. Like, there's other shitty movies where I'm like, but this is still stupid and fun, right? I mean, I this had more like, fun in Pan. I had more fun in The Walk. Nothing happened in this movie! No. Nope. Nothing! Uh-uh. Well, anything that happened was montaged over. over. So With, like, news clips. It'd be like the Mac launch, and then all the ousting of him and him losing the company, all that stuff is, like, montaged over and you're like wait I want to know about exactly. that and then it'd be like here's the next launch and you're like no no more launches <laughs> Jesus <laughs> like what's so crazy is that like Steve Jobs was known for like his his stage presence right for his like presentations for these launches well, we and his charisma him. and you never see his charisma. It's always the like um, dress rehearsal and you're like, cool, I can't wait to see this when it actually happens. Oh no. no, they're montaging over it again. <laughs> like for the first 40 minutes, they're launching the Mac and they keep having this problem because they need the Mac to say hello. They need the voice to work and it's crashing, right? It needs to say hello. Tell me why it's so important for it to say hello. And we hear Kate Winslet say, hello, like, 800 times. Why does it have to say hello? It has to say hello? Why does it have to say hello? Like, yeah, just, right? And so you're going, geez, I, I genuinely want to see this computer say hello now. Never nope. see it. Fast forward four years, five years, montage. This movie was unbearable. Unbearable. I mean. That is, like, if I could sum it up in one word, that would be it. Just. I'm, I, maybe I went into it with the wrong expectations, thinking that like I would learn about Steve Jobs' life, and, and the movie was like, fuck you. I wouldn't go see this movie. No, I would not even, recommend this at all. Even with Michael Fassbender. Nope. They managed to make Michael Fassbender not sexy. Right. Like, not even kind of. It's not worth it. I mean, it, it, well, no, not at all. Mm -hmm.